All right, adventurers, campers, overlanders, four-wheel drivers, whatever you call yourself. Today we're going to show you one quick upgrade that anyone can do to their rig uh, in their home. It's easy, it's cheap. So today we're going to install some heavy-duty battery bus terminals. Now, if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. We're going to tell you what they are, why you want them, and how to do it. Let's get into it. So the first question you probably have is, what is a bus bar? No, we're not talking about a vehicle that you can rent for a bridal party. We're talking about this little device right here. Uh, it's a real simple, it's just a piece of brass uh, with some screws on it. And uh, it gets its name from the Latin word omnibus, which means for all. And that's basically what it is. It gives us a platform for all of our wiring so that we can make all of our electrical connections in one place and they're nice and safe. Now, why would you want them instead of this? This is fine. I mean, everything's properly grounded here. The, the cable is shielded. But in addition to making it look nicer, uh, one of the advantages of having a nice thick solid uh, piece like this is it's going to dissipate heat better. Uh, so it's going to be safer in addition to looking nicer underneath the hood. And when you go to add additional accessories later, you're going to be thankful that you have the extra connections that this bus bar allows. Now especially if you have a switch system installed in your rig, you may be wondering why are there so many connections direct to the battery in the first place? Well our Switch Pros is taking care of a lot of our accessories here and that prevents us from having to make a, all of our connections at the battery, but there are still some things that have to be connected or are better to be connected at the battery. So the Switch Pros itself is a high amp line, the winch that we have is a high amp line, those need to be direct to the battery. Uh, we also have on this one right here is our GMRS radio. Uh, you generally want a CB or a GMRS, ham, anything like that to be connected direct to the battery so that you don't get uh, interference when the engine is running. If you connect it to another part of the electrical system, you'll find uh, that you can hear it when you're using your radio, which is not very pleasant. Uh, and then we have uh, also power to an air compressor over here, the Switch Pros. They do not recommend running an air compressor off of the Switch Pros, but just use the Switch Pros to throw a relay to engage the, the battery there. So those are the connections that we have direct to the battery that we're gonna put on the bus bar and clean that up a little bit, and as well as the ground over here, the associated grounds for any of those connections. So first thing you wanna do anytime you're working on your electrical system, anything near the battery, you take the negative terminal off first. If you've got a Jeep Wrangler, you're going for a 10 millimeter wrench. And, uh, just loosen that up. And take the negative terminal off and set it out of the way where it's not going to pop back up on that lead. All right, now our, all of our electrical systems are disconnected and safe to work on. Let's go ahead and do the same thing to the positive. Doesn't take much. These power cables are pretty heavy duty, so they're not going to bend a whole bunch out of the way. Uh, and that's one of the reasons you want to tuck your negative way out of the way is if you're working on this and that makes contact with that stud, positive stud in your battery, you're not gonna spark, you're not gonna ruin anything. Now for the next step, I'm gonna remove all of the accessories that I've added on to the OEM bus, and uh, we'll move those to the new bus after we put them on. So first thing I'm gonna do is just take all them off. They're also 10 millimeter. Someone did too good of a job tightening this one down. Okay, now you can see I've removed all of my accessory power cables. Uh, there is one OEM cable that's not hooked up yet because that's gonna end up being moved to the bus. Uh, we're gonna install the bus bar on this empty stud here. And you want that one completely empty, nothing else on it, so it has the best connection that it can make. So we're just gonna take this bus bar, we're gonna slip it right over that, and then we're gonna take the uh, oversized uh, extended hex nut here, and that's gonna go on top of that and secure that down. If you're using a Jeep Wrangler, most likely this is going to be a 16 millimeter stud. So as you can see now, we have five options uh, to install our power cables for our accessories, including this uh, taller extended brass stud. Uh, that's gonna be good for our high amp connections like our winch. So we'll just decide where we wanna put things now and uh, clean it up. I've decided to keep the air compressor power on this stud that it was originally. 
because it is nice and out of the way and we'll keep our wiring clean. Now we'll put our winch on our high amp. Okay, now before we put this back onto the stud, this is a good opportunity since you have it off to see if you have any uh, corrosion or acid coming up from your studs. Uh, these are pretty clean here. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe them off and I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of dielectric grease since I have it. Um, if you don't have it, you can always use Vaseline. It's perfect. Uh, after you clean the acid off, which you can do with some water and baking soda or even vinegar and baking soda if you rinse it well afterwards. But you want to make sure that you don't have any corrosion and there's no acid there. Uh, put it on so you have a clean contact and to a clean contact. Now you can see it doesn't take much and I will just use my finger here. Spread it over that evenly and this helps prevent corrosion and helps make sure you have a solid electrical connection. All right, now we still have one more tool that we can use that will help us prevent uh, corrosion. Uh, see, the acid in your battery can eventually leak out, whether in gaseous form or through liquid, through where the studs are. So to combat that, there's these really cheap pads that you can get. Uh, they're color-coded so that you can remember which, which one goes on which terminal. Helps you see which terminal is which as well. Uh, and they're coated uh, with an, uh, an oil-based substance that helps prevent that acid from coming through. It resists the acid and uh, you just put them down on top of the stud before you put your contact back on and that will keep the connection nice and safe and uh, keep, protect your battery. Okay, now we're set to do the same work on the negative terminal that we already did on the power terminal. It's positive. We'll take our second bus bar and uh, the process is identical. It's personal preference, but I like to put the smallest gauge wires towards the end of the bus and progressively thicker wires towards the inside of the bus. And of course, again, those really thick high amp ones will go on that brass stud. All right, everything's tightened up. We're ready to reinstall. Still wanna follow the same procedure that you would before you did the bus bars, uh, and that's to connect the positive before you connect the negative. Now, I don't know if you can see that I've got one place right here that I'm not too comfortable with uh, this really heavy gauge power cable that goes to the winch uh, butting up against these connectors here on the ground, but I can easily swivel them over just a little bit. So I'm gonna do that just to keep everything out of the way of each other. So you notice that this install doesn't reduce the number of cables that you have, but it does reduce the number of shared connections you're gonna have on your battery terminals, which was really nice. So we've gone from the snaggle before where everything was on top of one another to just having a couple of the smaller gauge connections sharing a post and our bus bars have made things nice and clean and ready for some heavy duty electrical accessories. Okay friends, well that's it. That's a really simple upgrade that anyone can do on their own. Uh, it won't take you much time at all. As a matter of fact, if you think about doing it before you install any of your accessories, you're looking probably at a total of 15 minutes tops from hood up to hood down, and then you're done and ready to go. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button below. And if you're on the lookout for more content, how to's and tips and reviews, then please hit the subscribe button. And uh, that's it. We'll see you next time on Overbuilt Adventure. I always like to make sure that everything works when you're done. Turn the key on. Switch pros, bumper lights. Boom, boom. Listen for the relay. Oh, that's the winch. Air compressor. It's already got air in it. Backup camera. Boom. And chase deterrent. Oh yeah.